Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Rymac, and this is Nexus Arcana, a show where our group of friends comes together to play Dungeons and Dragons. Last time on our story, our heroes found themselves cornered by a powerful figure from Valentina's past, Pirate Lord Akutia, one of the nine le pirate lords of legend. Valentina had once attempted to assassinate Akutia but failed, and after all this time, it seems fate has drawn them together again. But this time, Akutia approached Valentina with a compromise rather than tearing each other apart. A, a precious artifact, an all-seeing eye, was taken from Akutia from his previous first mate, a massive red reptilian man with three slashes across his face by the name of Torcus. Akutia mentioned Torcus hiding somewhere in the southern Dremlos desert, and Akutia wanted the Six Fingers to retrieve the artifact for him. Wanting to expedite this and reunite with his lost item, Lord Akutia offered passage across the desert. Seemingly left with little choice, the crew boards the Marauder, Akutia's war skiff, and races off into the blustering sands. While traveling, the ship chose a narrow passage to cut some time out of their journey, but were blocked by a wall and ambushed by a roaming war skiff gang of Yanti. The Yanti grew desperate in their battle and summoned a massive tentacled monstrosity from the pits of the desert, which nearly took Selene as Sakucha managed to tear down the wall and escape their assailants. Our party rested afterwards and enjoyed a well-earned meal. The day shifts to evening now as we come upon our adventurers in their bunks, resting a moment longer. You are all free to converse, attempt activities, or you can continue on to the end of the day. What would you guys like to do? Um, kind of like after resting and bandaging wounds, I'll uh, approach Braza. I uh, I would appreciate it if you would help me finish up uh, repairing this armor, if, if you could. Of course, of course. We just need a place to work. Um, I'll kind of look around. Is, is there like a place that we can get that settled? Yeah, there are plenty of places on the ship itself. Uh, as you're looking around for a place to set up and start working with your uh, armor, um, many of the other Scorians and crew members are advising you don't do it somewhere below decks where heat could catch fire to something else and they recommend the uh there's a massive metal grate above deck that sort of leads it it shows through to the deck beneath it but it's one of the large non-metal surfaces on the ship that is visible to work with superheated metal on so they recommended that part of the ship but together with braza um you guys are able to set up workable conditions at that spot awesome and i'll i'll help her uh get this done like fetch her stuff okay tools um i would say Braza, together with Vigil, you may have the help action for this, but I will need you to make me a Smith's check, a Smith Tools check, and this will probably occupy the rest of your evening if you two are willing to repair Vigil's plate armor. I'm okay with that if, if okay. you are. Okay, so go ahead and roll me Smith Tools with advantage. Uh, what stat do you want me to use? I would like you to use since you are using your magic casting to superheat the metal with various tools that you already have on hand um, because you have the heat metal spell right mm -hmm. okay I'm going to ask for adding your intelligence modifier okay Intelligence plus proficiency? Yep. Okay. So this is just going to be a... Alright, so that'd be 16. Alright. 
that does pass the DC, and together with Vigil, you two are able to occupy yourselves with slowly superheating the metal and taking spare uh, welding equipment that uh, Braza had brought with them, Vigil, and you're able to help shape and mold the plate armor uh, back to its crunched and bent form to suit your body once again, along with Braza's expertise and um, hammering abilities, knowing when and where to strike once the metal's been superheated, and then allowing it to quickly cool. Um, with, with various other instruments you guys have used. So by the time it comes to punk down for the night, you have regained your plate armor. Thank God. Uh... During this time, would anybody else be liking to do anything else? Uh, Caden is going to find Val and uh, say, uh, Val, uh, can I have a quick moment with you uh, in private? Yes, of course. And I'll so, follow. Uh, uh, a little while, we'll go somewhere. Uh, like a corner or something. Um, so, you uh, you notice something that I was uh, doing just a couple of hours ago, and I wanted to talk more about that without everybody else uh, here. Um, for some reason, I have this feeling that I can trust you about this. Uh, can I trust you to keep this secret? No, of course, I'm very good at keeping secrets. Can I insight check that? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, she said that super sarcastically, but like I meant that very genuinely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Massive insight check. You get she's goofing with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, this is something that I've been dealing with for. Oh, the majority of my life, I suppose, but it's only recently after traveling with you guys that I've been able to reflect and look back upon my life and realize, what am I doing and what is it all for? Mm. I've, uh, I'm in a blood contract and I want out of it, but I don't think I can get out of it. Do you mind if I ask with who? With Lord Dis. Does that ring a bell? Oh, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Of the second, I think. I don't know my lore that well. Second or third level of hell. Oh. Okay. And um, what exactly does this contract require of you? It requires that I maintain devotion and loyalty to Dis, and that I carry out his actions and wills, and do the biddings of Hell. And while at one point in my life this was appealing and fun and rewarding, and I really believed in it, and some part of me still does, I just... There's parts of me that resist this. And when I do resist, something comes up within me. And I can feel my body literally deteriorating when I step away from this for only even a fraction of a second. I can already tell that the next few days are going to be hard just because I'm opening up like this. Okay, I won't ask so much then if it's going to be like that on you, but I will say, Caden, I am glad that you told me. And we all have our shadows and our demons. Uh, that is not pun. I mean this, you know. Um, but I will help you in this, getting out of this, uh, if you want it. And... I will let you decide if you want to tell the rest of the group, of course, but I think that they would also uh, want to help. I think they all care about you very greatly. 
Thanks, Val. That of means course. a lot. I, I, I want out, but I think there is only one way out, and it's that just consumes me. Well, we don't know that, but um, I could see what information I could get discreetly, of course. Um, so, I I don't know a great deal too much, um, but being a cleric, I know. I know some things, and I have connections, so... We'll see what I can do. Thank you. By doing this, I am... putting you guys at a bit of a risk here, but... I owe you. You guys are helping me with... saving my life. So I'll do the same for you. I'll put a hand on your shoulder and just let out a sigh of relief and say... Thanks, Val. I put, like, my hand over yours and, like, pat it. I'm like, of course, of course. Well, uh, if there's anything else, I think we should probably get some rest now. Agreed. Okay. I'll head back to my bunk. Alright. And while you guys are doing that, uh, Celine, is there anything that you wanted to be doing while everybody is off uh, you see Vigil and Braza intermittently. They're working on Vigil's plate armor. You see Valentina and um, Caden from afar seemingly having a private discussion. What are you doing during all this? Um, <clears throat> I imagine I'm pretty tired. So I would just kind of be laying on my cot kind of allowing myself silence internally I would ask if anyone is here with me whisper hey hello And if I don't... Go ahead. Make me a wisdom check. And can you speak a little more into the mic or turn your gain up? Yeah. I'm not very good at wisdom saves. It's not a save. It's just a check. So just add your wisdom modifier to this roll. Plus one. Six. Six. You sit there, waiting some sort of reply. About a minute passes and nothing comes to you. Alright. I'll just turn over and close my eyes. Okay. Eventually you all find yourselves heading to your cots and nodding off for the night. And you are carried through the night, the sound of sandstorms blustering past, itching and scratching the sides of the wooden and steel deck. The dunes passing beneath you like a soft, coarse river. And after some time... You all find yourselves coming to a pleasant full night's sleep. Most of you. Caden. You open your eyes and you're in the desert. As if the war gift has left you behind. You instinctively sit up, check your surroundings, and notice that it is flat in all directions. Only the sand, hard and coarse beneath your feet. You stand up. It's almost as rigid as sandstone. And it's just 
endless horizons in every direction with a star-filled sky above you. And you hear a distant howl. A howl like a wolf. Alone. As you look out into the desert, you see a small shadow bang in the moonlight, slowly approaching you. It's low and it's on all fours, and it's wreathed in black viscous oil dripping from it and leaving a trail of inky void. Two white shimmering silver eyes look you down as it slowly approaches. And as it gets closer, you've realized that this wolf is standing about as tall as you are, about five feet at the shoulder. And at about 30 feet off, it just stops and it looks at you and you can see upon closer inspection at this distance, the inky void that is dripping off of it is patches of substance of skin of viscera though not not viscera that you see of the material plane but whatever is making up this entity in front of you it's like it's trying to cover a skeleton like it's trying to hold its body together and it looks at you with these unwavering silver eyes. And it just lowers its head and you see the ridges on its back, its hair standing up like spines. And you see its jaw lower, almost to the verge of dislocating. And wordlessly, well, not wordlessly, but without lips, tongue, or jaw moving, you just hear in a voice all around you, Feed us. We are hungry. What if I don't? It takes a step forward. Then we shall feed. You need us. It takes another step do you, forward. Do you? I think it's you who needs me. The wolf gives a distorted tritone growl at you as you feel your ears and the very air around you begin to sickenly vibrate with the sound of this growl. It's over almost overwhelming as you feel that heat in your palm lance up your arm, tracing the lips of this newly formed amalgamation that is splitting your arm. Without us, you will consume yourself. Without us, the almighty Dis will be displeased. You can try to tempt me with your mind games, and as real as this might feel, you answer to this, and I answer to this. But you are not my master. Then who are you that wields my blade, my body?
I have your form. You are physical. You can be destroyed. You can be forgotten about. Against and when the time is right, you will be left aside. The mongrel form begins to pace in a circle around you. Does your body not also deteriorate? Film with maggots when its skin is torn and your flesh is forgotten. Where do you go when the lights go out? When your soul perishes and leaves this plane? I return to the hells. Where do you return, little morsel? Looks down. I don't know. For that, you will always have me bested, I suppose. Yet I am the one forged into a blade. And you still walk the material planes. Unfettered. A mere curse on your forearm. Aiden's just like looking at his feet, just like biting his tongue. You see the two inky black paws approach in your vision as your eyes glance upwards ever so slightly. The mass that had covered this creature's head has fallen away leaving only a pitch black wolf skull with those two gleaming piercing silver eyes looking at you lidless from within its sockets it opens its jaw slightly and lets out a hellish breath that stinks of rotten disease Who wield my blade? I hunger and I must feed. Feed you well. Your vision slowly goes to black until all that remains is those two piercing silver eyes. You seek another way. And you wake up in a cold sweat. Your clothes are damp on your skin. Your hair is tossed in a mess, and you feel drenched in your cot as you look around and everybody else is still sleeping soundly all around you. I'll pick up Velhazoth. Just look over it. And put it back down. Try to find sleep. That same sort of gnashing, gnawing feel, as if your hand is biting the sword, comes and goes as you tighten and loosen your grip on Belhazoth. And eventually you return to sleep. And before you know it, it is morning as everybody begins stirring from their cots and awakening 
preparing for the day. You all gain a full night's rest. Ooh. Oh. Oh. And for everybody tuning in at home, our party did level up between sessions, so they are on now level seven. Hey. So, exciting, exciting things in store. <laughs> As you all begin to rouse uh, many of the scorians and decants around you do, there's already plenty of work to be done. Plenty of people are beginning to go out and exchange positions with many of the crew hands that were sailing through the night, uh, through the sands themselves. It seems not much damage occurred to the ship, though sails need to be adjusted, sand needs to be scrubbed clean from various ports in which it was caught in, uh, the, gan the cannons need to be uh, cleaned out as sand is uncomfortably getting in them, as well as many other uh, services that just need general maintenance. And as you're all going throughout your day, I would like somebody to roll me a d20. I'll do it. Go for it. I got a seven. A seven, alright. Um, with a seven, most of the day goes by pretty uneventfully. You don't see anything as you're taking turns uh, in the crow's nest looking out, keeping an eye out for more war skiffs on the horizon and you don't see many possible assailants or means of concern as you sail throughout your day if there's anything people would like to do during the day, any conversations to be had or activities to be attempted uh, we may do that otherwise we can continue to the next story beat um, what would you guys like to do? Mm. I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think probably just chilling, sailing <laughs> along. All right. Like a villain. It's a RuneScape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Raza would probably want to keep tabs on where they are in the Dremlos Desert. Um, keeping tabs as best as you can. You guys did sail through the night, so... Um, unlike horse travel where your horses need to rest, the ship was able to continue sailing for an additional eight hours. So you're roughly 50 miles into the journey at this point. And you are coming up on a valley within the desert where some of it begins to turn to grass and earth and tundra. And that you are skirting around. Um, but this grassland, uh, though it may be arid and dry and dying this time of year, is nearby the... Notorious Arena of Garatos. And you, with your general knowledge of the area, know it to be essentially a coliseum of revelry, ne'er dwells, and a lot of gambling and pit fighting. But that's just at a, a glance at the history of this place. Hayden, you are far more familiar with this area. Um, as you guys are passing through it, you recognize these outposts um, of earth and the various structures you see jettisoning out of the earth itself. Kind of like firewatch towers. Um, but there are several, several hundred story, no, several hundred foot um, tall structures that stand out of the sand near the edges of this grassland and just on the horizon through the wavering laves of the heat mirage you can see what stands seems to stand like a 
a five foot story, about a half mile wide, just of Roarus Coliseum, and you can hear the distant roar and thunder of crowds teeming with thousands of people. And this is all passing you by late into the afternoon as you guys have been continuing to travel. And at about this point, with very little going on, many of the Scorions on deck begin to engage in imbibement and are passing around drinks, getting drunk. Um, when at one point, uh, Gabbers, uh, the toad folk, comes up to you guys while everybody's down in the decks below and uh, passes out bottles of rum and says, Come on, we're having a celebration. Join us in a drink, will ya? And a bunch of the other scories are, like, jeering you on and, like, uh, are kind of excited at the new fresh blood in the mix. And uh, they're all pounding their tankards and singing various Scorian uh, sailing songs and just having a jolly good time. But Gabbers passes out to you each uh, a bottle of of uh, some sort of alcohol. It looks like everybody's engaging in very questionable and highly intoxicative <laughs> uh, imbibements, but it seems like a jolly good time all around. Can I very discreetly cast Detect Poison and Disease? Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, hmm. What are the components for casting this spell? Uh, I do need uh, a yew leaf, but I have my my thing, right? Or does it not do for materials? Um, it, I'm it's looking for a... VMS. Do you have verbal, material, yeah, or it's, somatic? Yeah, it is, it is verbal and somatic and material. Okay, so to cast it discreetly, you would have to conceal verbal material and somatic components from everybody mm. else watching you okay do you still want to try and attempt that i mean i feel like my my sleight of hand and stuff is pretty good <laughs> okay but this is also masking your voice which will True. require a different kind of role okay uh yeah oh, fuck it i won't cast it I mean, okay, because like are, they're all watching us pretty heavily, or are they all drunk? They're all drunk and watching, watching, watching you guys. guys. Like, like they're kind of kinda... eager for you all to join in. Okay. Mm. I'm fighting the, the thing of like my character would do this, but I'm like I don't know. Take a swig. Take a swig. Oh, you see Celine taking a swig. Okay. It's delicious and it is warm going down. It's very tasty. It's quite worth it. Take a swig. I'll have a social bevy. All right. <laughs> I'll have a martini. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All After right. watching Celine for a little bit, then Valentina will join in. All right. All right. Valentina, Valentina takes, takes a swig. Do we have our own bottles, or are we sharing a bottle? You all got your own bottles. They're like oh, dirty, yeah. like green, sti like uh, glass-stained bottles that have been cleaned out and filled with this moonshine-esque liquid. It's very heavy alcohol content. You can barely taste it going down. Yeah. <laughs> Potent oh, stuff. stuff. Vigil, Vigil Braza, Braza, what about you guys? Uh, yeah, I'll take some. All right. Um. Hmm. I think Vigil is going to try to keep his wits up. He had a good time the other night, so. You don't partake? No, yeah. 
at that, Gabbers and the other Scorians kind of gather around you. They're like, oh, come on, join us. It'll be a good time. As, like, they see everybody else taking a swig. They're, like, joining arms with the other crew members. And they are start getting around in a circle of you and, like, Vigil, 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 Vigil. <laughs> um, all right, Vigil will begrudgingly take... He'll try to make it look like a big, big gulp, but he's gonna take like a like a like a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> just like toss it in the air, but like <laughs> just kind of like only just just, just half the yeah, sure thing. They all go yeah. around like yeah, <laughs> shouting and singing back and forth in Scorian songs, and um, ah. <laughs> over the course of the evening, you guys do have quite a, a mixture of experiences of learning ska- songs in uh, an aquatic tongue you might not know the words to but you're learning the sounds and joining in with the chorus and there's lots of hands of poker and different dice games being played and it seems like a jolly good time all around and when evening finally settles in um I need everybody to make constitution saving throws. I Even fucking me? knew it! <laughs> everybody that drank it. Oh, man. Oh, man. God damn it. I well, knew, anyone I... within 10 feet of me has plus 3 to their save. So. Cool. I'll take that. I got an 18. <laughs> A 20 total? 16. Out of six. Seventeen. All right, who got the twenty? I did. As everybody starts passing out on barrels and chairs around the deck, um, Braza, you don't pass out. But the alcohol is hitting you a bit harder than you expected. And you're watching uh, your friends having a good time as people start falling asleep. But Valentina is like passed out sitting up in a chair. And then you see Caden stumble a bit and collapse onto the ground. Celine is arm in arm around another scorion who takes notice of her passing out and then starts discreetly looking around at the other Scorians. And you watch Vigil as well, seemingly sound asleep in his armor, slumped against a wall. And as you begin to call out to your friends, you feel your voice is slow to carry to your lips. You try to muster the strength to call out, to cry for help, to scream, to move your limbs, but those are sluggish to respond to. You're awake, not totally taken over by the effects of the poison, but the Scorians start gathering your friends, unconscious bodies, and their belongings and taking them all to the deck. Is it just the Scorians, or is it any of the other crew? Gabbers comes along with Gina under one arm. And he points to two Scorians who both pick you up by the arms and start dragging you and Delia to the surface of the deck. And I can't move or say anything? You can try to. I'm not going to just yet. As you all re- reach the surface of the deck and you're watching this Braza, waiting for your moment to strike out, to have all your belongings, to have all of you, Lord Akucha is nowhere in sight. They go up to the edge of the war skiff as it's passing by close to the outskirts of Garatas. Vigil goes overboard. 
Is there like a lifeboat or some sort of skiff on board the deck? Perception check. Perception. Seven. Your eyes are too clouded and your vision begins. You start seeing like after images. Your vision is too clouded and blurry. You can't make sense of up or down. You become a little disoriented as the poison is still having you drugged, though not totally unconscious. You're looking around for a spare vessel, some means to escape when you see them toss Valentina's body over the side of the vessel as well. And then Cadence. And then Delia's. And Celine's. Along with all their belongings. And then Gabbers approaches you and looks you up and down. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about this, madam. It's just business, and uh, frankly, you all became a thorn that Torgus wasn't expecting. We'd appreciate your disappearance. Have any of us heard that name before? You know that Torcus is the name of the first mate that betrayed Akucha. Oh, shit. These people are in on it. And they toss you overboard. You stumble. You you fly for a matter of moments. Can I try and the sand whip around you? Can I try and land instead of just like fall? Uh, you can try and make me a acrobatics check, or I, I would say a dexterity saving throw. Uh, dexterity saving throw. You are heavily intoxicated and partially drugged. The DC will be very high. No, that's eight. You try to contort yourself in the air to land properly, but it rises to your vision faster than you expected, and you tumble and skid across the desert sand, and you watch with your intoxicated vision slowly slow uh fading into a sleep as the war skiff continues on over the horizon until it's out of sight the desert air is cold as sleep finally takes you you all eventually slowly are roused from your sleep. It is dark out. You're in the middle of the desert. The inebriation isn't totally gone, but you have your wits about you. You realize that you are no longer on the ship and it is nowhere in sight. What do you do? Did the ship leave any sort of tracks? It did. There is a long river-like uh, indentation in the sand. Stretching from one end of your vision to the other. They they threw our belongings overboard as well? Yes, they did. Oh, interesting. Okay. What happened? Why are we here? A crow poisoned us, dear. I believe they were working for the... Uh, the person that we were after. It was the, the first mate who betrayed uh, the captain. The whole crew? I did not see the captain. Uh, and I saw... Was it Scabbers? Scabbers? Gabbers. Gabbers. He was there as well. I assume they plan on mutiny. Valentina jumps to her feet. Bullshit. He was in on it. There was no any mission. He dragged us out here and left us for dead. 
that seems like a pirate thing to do. He said that we were starting to become a thorn in the side for the... the ex-first mate. Torcus? Torcus, yes. Torcus. Are you sure? Yes, I heard that. I may be old, but I'm not deaf, dear. Not yet. <laughs> but why... If we're and, going after him, why are they throwing us off? And if if uh, Kutra was going to leave us for dead, wouldn't he have taken our things? Yeah, that's the, a little the, weird. The crew, they're yeah, they're going to plan a mutiny. That's what it sounds like. I I believe so too. If if they they must have respected us enough to at least uh, give us our things back. Yeah, like, do do we care to chase after them, or is this feels, like a blessing in disguise? Feels wrong to leave Akucha to such a cruel fate, and we may yes. need him in the wars to come. That's fair. What, what do you think, uh, Valentina? Raz says that that's what you heard, then I'm willing to give it a chance that Akucha wasn't involved. But... I think it would be wise if we keep in mind it is a possibility. That seems a little um, convenient that he mentioned something like that. Indeed. Well, there's a track. Might as well maybe follow it till the sun comes up, at least. Yes. Either way, we're getting payback on whoever is responsible for this. Agreed. Yes. Is everyone okay? I know I feel a little woozy. Well, I I can only imagine how you all feel. I only had a little sip. Pretty bad headache right now. Yeah, same. Is like how are everybody? Is are they still like poisoned or? Uh... Everybody seems coherent at this point. If anything, groggy from tumbling out of the ship and being disoriented, waking up. But everybody seems to have their wits about them at this point. Okay, so they don't have, like, the poison status or anything? No. Okay. Super hungover? Yeah. <laughs> Enough poison to knock you out. Got it. <clears throat> okay, well, let's get some water and... Head on out, I guess. Let's. I'll pass a flask over to uh, to Braza if they want a drink of water. Yeah, she'll take a drink. And I'll offer it to same to Valentina. I'll take a drink. Okay. All right. Let's go. As you're turning to leave Celine, everybody picking up their packs and beginning to trudge along the trailhead. After about 15 minutes um, with you leading everybody along this indentation in the sand, I want you to make me a perception check as you're looking forward. Or did you say someone specifically? Uh, dirty 20. Oh. Am I cutting out? I was asking for Celine. Okay, sorry. I, wasn't, I just wasn't sure. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got a dirty 20. Dirty 20. All right. You would then notice several shadows against the dunes poking their heads about torso height above the top in both directions. There seems to be about nine of them. Oh. Top larger figures whose forms are immalleable and sort of blending in with the distant sand dune shadows. Uh, can I take a closer look with my scope? Sure. sure. I'm trying to dif differentiate if they are large creatures or our size yeah. yeah do I have to make a check for that yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, dirty 20 again. I rolled another 15. Okay. Following, following up, up behind, behind Celine, Valentina, you pause a moment and notice Celine stopping in her tracks and looking forward through her scope. Just as Celine is peering out towards the horizon of the sand dunes, and you see these slender build bodies, unclothed but marked with various paints and other shiny, reflective um, bits and scraps of what appears to be uh, shards of metal and bone that have been affixed to their bodies via straps. In these tall, angular, very lithe, lizard-like bodies with tall, frilled mohawks that stand above their heads and war paint that crisscrosses them in innumerous patterns, all dimly illuminated by the moonlight. And as you trace down towards the larger forms, you see that they are all riding these very large, almost this strange aquatic reptilian mixture. It, it seems like a Komodo dragon, except very large, and the head of it ends in an almost shark-like uh, head with rows and rows of sharp teeth and a long dorsal fin that sits just behind their riders. These massive desert-crawling uh, creatures. Um, and you look up and you see that all these people have spears out. And as you're watching them trying to identify them, you see several more appear above the horizon as the first initial nine all start heading down to the dune banks and begin surrounding you all. Okay, I'll say, um, look alive, we have company. All right. And I'll draw my crossbows. I'm cocking my gun. <laughs> Were these um, kobolds, or was it? Does, was that? We're not they, sure. They not appear sure. much bigger as they grow closer, and as you guys prepare your weapons and prepare for their, for them, for a battle, more and more keep showing up on these. What you can now see are large creatures, these sand shark-like reptilians. And their lizard folk riders. There's about 15 of them that surround you all in a large circle, and they all have their spears pointed out towards you in the middle. One of them disembarks and approaches you all, and he's carrying what sounds like a heavy chain. And there are several things dangling from it as he approaches you. And you can see the first set of dangling objects he has in his hand is a pair of cuffs. What do we do here, guys? We are just travelers. We do not mean to intrude on your territory. We are simply just passing through. The lizard folk looks to you, then looks to the others. Um, there's a round of chuckles and laughter in the night that slowly encircles you all. And he looks back to you, his eyes glowing dimly in the moonlight. We cast armor of Agathus. <laughs> all right. What kind of language is that? Dracon yeah. That was draconian. I would understand and that. Though. I also would understand it. Uh, you guys would understand him saying, um, 
the offerings think we are a tour guide? Offering? Mm. Yeah. How many of them are there? There is roughly 15 lizard folk upon their 15 mounts. 15? He walks up to you, Celine. He's got a full neck and head above you as he approaches you, and he just holds out the manacles, and he makes a variety of other gibberish and clicking sounds at you, and holds out the manacles. I just look to the group, like, um, are we going with them, or...? In Draconic, I'm going to ask them, who are we offerings for? None of them respond to you as they kind of shift back and forth. Their spears still pointing at you. Their circle closes in a little tighter. Oh, God. What do we do? What do we do? I'll go with them, but I ain't putting manacles on. Yeah, I'm not I'm not so keen on being shackled. The first one is annoyed and it grabs your wrist, Celine. Oh and fuck claps no. A manacle on it. No 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 no. I would I would try to slip out of that. Mm mm. Can I try to like take my hand out away? Sure. Make me an acrobatics check. Oh my god. Put the cuffs on the lizard. Mm-hmm. I rolled pretty good. Okay. Um. Uh, 22. 22. He also rolled uh, a 22, so there's a bit of tussle back and forth as he begins grunting. Um, And two others dismount and approach you, Celine, and they both have their spears at your neck. Oh, no. The first one sweeps his tail, knocking your feet from beneath you and putting you on the ground as you're struggling with him, trying to wrench yourself free. You get the impression that they aren't going to take Unshackled for an answer. Oh, want to go with these people? <laughs> um, I just look to the group with panicked eyes. I don't know what to do. Are we really going to let them take us like this? Absolutely not. I'm not going down without a fight. I'm go with Valentina saying that I'm going to hybrid transform. All right. All right. We're going to take, take a break, break here then so I can set up the <laughs> battle map. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll go into initiative. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hope we can get out a lot. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I was like, oh, I think we got to go with them. And then they're like, here's some shackles. I'm like, I don't want to go with them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we will be right back. See you all in a minute.
and welcome back. Without further ado, let's roll initiative as I invite the players to the battle map. You all will have plus three to this. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say you're all within ten feet of each other. We're huddled and scared. <laughs> move us to the battle map. Plus three on top of our already whatever our bonuses. Yeah. Yes. Rolling like garbage tonight. Same. Thank you for the plus three. That made a difference, though. Yeah, it did. Of course. Oh man. Oh. Oh, it's Eesh. these things. <laughs> I like. I like the map title. The fucking desert. The fucking <laughs> desert. desert. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. Y'all don't Y'all. fucking know. I don't even fucking know. Y'all are just in the fucking desert. Fucking <laughs> desert. My feathers glisten in light. Mm-hmm. Ah! Uh, oh. Didn't you say we're within 10 feet of each other? Yeah, you can move each other to within 10 feet of each other, but this is where Celine would be. Not the authorities. <laughs> Not the yeah, cops. That's who these oh guys are. no. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of people. The sand cops. Sand you know, cops. you hear 15 people and you think, that's not that many, and then you see it and you're and like, you that's see so 15 cool. people <laughs> and their shark mounts, and you're like, oh, that's mm-hmm. 15's a lot. <laughs> okay. Without further, four levels higher than you. Do let's. Uh, get them initiatives. 22. Nice. What's the plus? Three. Plus three. three. Okay. 17. 17. 20. 20. Vigil, that's uh, 11. Uh, that's 8. That's 8. Eight. Okay. Unless, I mean, there's you don't add proficiency to your initiative, right? No, no. And Celine, fourteen. Is that with vigils plus three? Okay. Mm-hmm. I will add. All right, with that. Okay, so the turn order will be as follows. We've got Caden up first, followed by Valentina. Then we've got Braza and Delia. Then we've got the lizard folks. Oh God. We've got these strange blue glowing lizard folks that have their their war paint instead of red like everybody else's. Theirs is blue and it lights up as soon as combat starts. Uh, don't like the sound of that. Then we got Celine. Then we got Vigil, and then we've got the turn of 15 mounts. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Uh... Let's go ahead and get down to combat. Caden, you're first up. Is there music playing? There should be. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, Caden, you're but, first up. All right, Caden, seeing the consensus, nods and runs in. Uh, while running in, he is going to uh, place a seal onto this friend, not friend. Okay. And then he's gonna swing twice with Velhosoth. Swing twice? Oh, those aren't great rolls. Uh, first one is a, a 12. Uh, a 12 misses. Okay, second one is a 19. Uh, a 19 does hit. 
Okay. I'll uh, pop the seal and give you the damage. So that's 10 slashing and then, oh, double sixes for the necrotic, so 12 necrotic. 10 slashing and 12 necrotic? Yeah. All right. Uh, blindsiding this first uh, lizard folk, um, he goes down. Thanks. So this first one. That is better. Okay. Uh, next up, Valentina. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move to the other side of Vigil here, uh, and I'm going to shoot this one right in front of me here. Uh, well, that is. Do I get the plus three to this as well, Vigil, or just? Oh, um, just um, just the initiative. Okay, uh, so it's a nineteen. Okay, uh, a nineteen does hit. Okay, do I get sneak attack since he's within five feet of uh? Um, yeah, I will allow that. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be 14 damage. Okay. Uh, and then I'll strike again with my aesthetic. That's an 18 to hit. That does hit. And that's five damage. Okay. Um, Braza, you're up. Okay. I'm going to... I can't move my things at all. How about now? Uh, nope. That's weird. For me, it still says it's on Valentina's turn. Oh, gotcha. It moves with that. Interesting. All right, there okay. we go. Okay, um, I'm going to run forward. Uh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> and I'm going to cast... No, I'm not going to cast. Uh, am I within hitting distance of that other one? Which other one? You're within hitting yeah. distance of two of them. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hit the one on the left then. Just swing at it. Okay. That is 26 to hit. That hits, definitely. Uh, 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Then I'm going to s swing again if they're still up. That one goes down as well. Alright, then I'm going to hit the other one. Alright. Oh, it was almost natural twenty. Uh, let's see, sixteen to hit. Sixteen does hit. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ten points of bludgeoning damage. Ten points of bludgeoning damage. All right. This first then, round of combat. Is there anything else you want to do? Uh, Delia is going to come over here and punch him. Okay. Is 24 to hit? 24 hits. Oops. Not that. Uh, 10 points of force damage. 10 points? Mm hmm. Damn. A lot of damage, but he's still standing. Right, is that your turn? Yep, that's my turn. All right, so this first round of combat, you see Caden rush up, brandishing the sword and immediately going for two strikes just after Ch Selene transforms. Slash, slash! Hits one with his dark necrotic energy, and the first one falls in a heap of confused maths and freshly opened viscera as uh, Valentina whips out their crossbows in both hands. <laughs> 
firing off and uh, hitting the next lizard folk square in the chest, bringing him down. As two of them toppled over, Braza takes initiative, runs in, clubs the remaining one to death with her club, and begins to wail on the next one as Delia comes in, bringing in an artillery of forceful punches as we move on to the lizard folk's turn. And they are not happy as they all immediately begin rushing in. And they're not screaming. They're not shouting with war cries. They are just silently sleeking, darting quickly across to reach you all. Some of them dashing to close the distance. You do notice that the ones with the blue tattoos are staying back. As we come into their turn, um, let's see. Yeah, there is a sudden volley and wishing as a volley of javelins all head your guys' way. Uh, let's see, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attacks. And then this one's gonna move uh, closer in on you, Valentina. This one's gonna turn attention to you, Braza. We're going to go see I said eight that's gonna be let's start with two attacks against Kate that is a 23 and a natural 20 to hit yep both get through all right the first one uh, glances uh, through your side and the second one actually embeds itself in your leg and you feel this rush of pain as blood spurts out between the cracks in your armor you take sixteen points of uh, piercing damage next two attacks are going to go up against you vigil all right uh, that's a 14 and a 6 to hit. Miss and a miss. Right. Ah, it feels good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to have plate armor again. That's right. <laughs> the next two javelins are going to go at you, uh, Celine. That's a 21 and a 9 to hit. Uh, the 20 hits. Okay. Yeah. You take seven points of piercing damage as the javelin soars through the air and embeds itself in your sort of exterior rib cage. What does that reduce to? Because I take half. Right. What damage did I say? Piercing. I said seven. Yeah, seven. Okay, that's reduced to three for you. Uh, okay. As the javelin sticks in for a moment, but is kind of forced out by your were raven form as you kind of force it out of you. Um, the next two attacks are going against Valentina for these javelin attacks. And that's going to be a 13 and an 11 to hit. Both miss. All right. And then these two that are up against you guys, uh, we've got another one coming in at Vigil. Uh, this time with it's going to swing twice with its heavy club alright that's uh, an 18 and a 9 to hit I assume those uh, both miss still both miss yeah. All right. and the other club is going to come at you Braza Two attacks, a 13 and a 17 to hit. They both miss. They both miss, all right. You guys are tanky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
with that, it is the lizard folks' turn is over. We're gonna move on to the mage's turn as these lizard folks with the blue glowing tattoos begin to coalesce um, magics uh, in their in their hands. And let's see. Yeah. They are going to glow red hot. And suddenly you see this intense glow come from Caden, Vigil, and Delilah as they all begin to glow with the fiery intensity of a furnace as heat oh no. metal is cast on all your forms. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> Heavy armor takes 10 minutes to doff. You so, sneaky kobold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then okay. medium. What armor are you wearing, Caden? Medium. Time. Medium armor takes... F uh, Oh, heavy armor takes five minutes to doff, and medium armor takes one minute to doff. So... <laughs> That'll be ten rounds. Ten rounds for you. Uh -huh. Delia can't do anything. She's made of metal. So, uh, Vigil, that's 50 rounds for you. <laughs> which, so, it, it would only be able to be two of them because it's a range of 60 feet. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, so this one wouldn't be able to cast it. Cast it. Oh, okay. Um, well, this one didn't use his full movement then, so I'll just okay. skip forward. <laughs> okay. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The three of you all suddenly <laughs> sear up with an intense heat as you all take the heat metal. Uh, let's see. Takes 2d8 fire when you cast a spell. Okay. So Delia, Caden, and Vigil, for the sake of brevity, I'll roll once for all of you. That's 13 fire damage for each of you. Ow. No. And that will bring the shaman's turn to an end. Celine, you're up. Where, where is that fucking shaman? The shamans are the glowing ones on the map. I will go for... Uh... Um, ma, 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 ma. Sorry. I'll go for this one right here. Wait, 48 feet. Damn, I didn't realize they were that far. 47 yeah. feet. What's your total movement? Uh, 30 feet. You'd be able to get here. Uh, let's go to for this guy, the, the one before him. Okay. Get, get pretty close to this other guy over here yeah the 20 f this this dude right here okay i'll make a stop to him and then make my way over there okay my you way. My way. rush over this way <laughs> <clears throat> these other two lizard folk are going to take opportunity attacks against you do it baby burn those reactions and burn they are that's a 12 and a eight to hit <laughs> nope all right go ahead and do your business um, I am going to, as a bonus action, enact my rights on my arms. So one arm coalesce with cold, so I have a cold uh, damage added to my attacks. All right. So let me make sure I click on that real quick. Okay, and then I will make a... That's a bonus action to do that, I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is. Okay, so as an action, I'll attack. All right. <gasps> uh, action. Unarmed fighting style. Does a 16 hit? A 16 just hits. Oh, thank fucking god. Um, okay, so it's a D8, because I'm not wielding any other weapons. Right. Give me the D8. D8 and a D4. 
Can I use the the cold damage this round? Yes, you yes. can. Okay. So that's six slashing plus two cold. Six slashing plus two cold. You slash out with your arm after coalescing ice on it, giving you these extended like talons on your backwards hands and lashing out. You tear three distinctive gashes into the torso of this lizard folk who reels back in pain, screaming. Anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, do I have some movement still? That was all your movement, I believe. Okay. If I can't move anymore, then I'll stay there. Okay. Next up, Vigil. All right. Um, for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Mimir's Icicles on the uh, lizard man right here. Okay. What's he nice. got to do? Um, it's just it's a spell attack. So uh, I just need to make a spell attack roll here. Uh, 11. 11, unfortunately, does not hit. Oh, wait. No, I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm dumb. He needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, okay. I was yeah, going to say, so, I thought I wrote a dex save into that spell. Yeah. My bad. He makes a dex save of 3. It's a 14. Thank right. God. <laughs> he needs to make a He needs to make a concentration check. Now on heat metal. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so the DC is equal to the damage. Yeah. So he needs to he needs to beat a ten, and he gets a natural sixteen. Okay. <laughs> a valiant effort. effort. Regardless, he takes two d six cold damage. Okay. Um. That is five cold damage. And um, he his movement speed is halved, and he has disadvantage on his next attack roll. Okay. Okay. All right. You speak out this foreign tongue as part of the incantation needed for summoning these icicles. And as a bonus action... You fire off the icicles. They strike true. You still got your action, I believe. Yeah. Um, I have disadvantage on attacks, but I'm going to try to attack this guy in front of me anyway. All right. Go for it. Um, that's a 12 and a 10. 12 and a 10 both unfortunately miss. Okay. And that is my turn. After you go, one of the shamans blows a very powerful whistle as you watch all of the mounts start scooting in ravenously. Um, but you only got 30 feet of movement, so they can't get very far. <laughs> but they do make things clustered and uh, crowded very quickly. upon you like fruit flies to an old tomato next round. Uh, <laughs> which one blew the horn? Uh, one of the shamans did. You didn't... One of the shamans did. 
Who's okay. the snitch? <laughs> it is the one. I'll say it was uh, uh, this guy. Woo, there he is. Hello, hello. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is the Great Wikes turn. Or the. <laughs> not Great Wikes. <laughs> Obviously, they're sand sharks. Um, let's see, actually. Sorry, Delia. Okay. Um, yeah. That is their turn as they all begin moving in. Uh, very much like monitor lizards, just slowly uh, muscled arm in front of muscled arm, tracking their way through the desert, their hungry jaws open as they approach. Caden, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, bonus action put a seal on this guy. This shaman. Okay. And then I will throw two javelins uh, at that shaman. Okay. Go ahead and make your attack rolls. Hey. Okay. Uh, that's a 19 for the first one. That hits. So that's five piercing, and I'll pop the the seal for 11 necrotic okay so it's 16 total station saving throw against a 16 damage um yeah with yeah. that um uh, he got a he got 10, 10 on his con save so heat metal ends on you cool i'll still continue throwing my second javelin here okay Uh, that is better. That's a 21. Yeah. That hits. Oh, and a really good damage die roll. So that's 11 plus 5, 16. Another 16 damage? Yep. That, that shaman, shaman goes, goes down. down. E. Nice. Right. Uh, I don't have much else to do, but I just want to see if there's a better spot for me to be. Um, I'll move here. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go there. Moving in next to Braza and La, you end your turn. Valentina, you're up. What do you do okay. as you watch everybody slowly swarming in around you? You find your situation makes you quickly outnumbered, but your allies are holding strong. What do you do? Okay. I... Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> um... Can I cast charm person on the lizard in front of me wait we've already does it work if we've already done damage to them it, it has disadvantage if you're in combat yeah uh, that would be the condition okay I feel like I should probably still try it it's up to you I mean if it fails then go back to fighting yeah, fucking right <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, um, let's see, um, if I cast it at a second level, I can target one additional creature. Um, no, I'll save my second level spell slots, so we'll just cast it at first level. Alright. So, um, I'll cast it on him, and then in Draconic, I'll say, we'll give up willingly if you take us alive. And, uh, you know see if he can like get the rest to like back down all righty what is the save on that uh 15 all right he rolls with advantage. it's a wisdom Got it. oh 
Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Did it work? Uh, you find this spell taking hold, and you see his complexion and his eyes narrow for a moment before you see his eyes glaze over. Okay. Um, I mean, no. I mean, if if it worked, then I'm going to say to, to everyone, like, to put their weapons down, and I'm gonna raise my hands in the air. Okay. Valentina lowers her weapon and raises her hand in the air. Braza, seeing Valentina do this, what do you do? She's crazy, and I'm going to hit the <laughs> one in front of me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Alrighty. Go ahead and make your attack That's roll. 19 to hit. Uh, that hits. Alright. I would be, like, pissing my pants if a bunch of sharks was surrounding me. That's 10 points of damage. We're about to start taking flank damage. Is that what they do? They are yeah, going to be soon. To Look at how close everybody bonuses. is on us. Oh, fuck. Alright, what was your damage, Raza? 10 points of damage. 10 points of damage to this one. He goes down. What do you do now? Um, I am going to... If we collapse in on each other, they can't flank us. Okay. Good so plan. get close? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, like make a circle. Okay. I'm going to come over here to this one, and I'm going to try and hit this one. Okay. Oh no, he's charmed! I can make a fight for us! <laughs> oh, wait, that one was the, that was the one you charmed? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay, you you don't have to know that. You can hit him, it's okay. <laughs> okay, that's 22 to hit. That hits. Alright, okay. that is... 8 points of bludgeoning damage. Just as this one seems to have an air of recognition about him, he gets domed over the head by a magical hammer. <laughs> night night. He gets to make his wisdom save. Yep. That's a 19 on his save. Oh, oh he passes. Yeah. He snaps out of the charm. Anything else you want to do, Raza? Um... Delia is going to see. Run at this one and tackle them. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're going for a, a, a grapple, a shove. A grapple. Okay. Go ahead and make me an athletics or an acrobatics check, your choice. All right, let me, let me check my steel defender stats. Challenges. Uh, athletics, I think. Okay. Now, that's seven. Oof. Delia goes in for a mid waist tackle, and the lizard folk reaches a claw down on Delia and shoves Delia's face into the dirt. Ooh. Good thing she's a robot. <laughs> Anything yeah. else you want to try? That's my turn. All right. With that, we move to the lizard folks as they all start swarming in now on within melee range. Oh boy. Utterly <laughs> surrounding you guys. Um, let's see, this one's going to circle around for flanking. Uh, <laughs> all right. This first one's going to come at and strike out with a heavy club and then go for a shield bash against you, uh, Valentina. 
Okay. That is a 16 and an 18 to hit. The 18 hits. All right. You take three points of uh, piercing damage as um. you bat away the heavy club, but it thrusts its spike shield forward at you. Um, I want to use my, um, oh, I don't remember what the spell is called, but when I take a hit, I can let out a cloud of smoke. Oh, uh, that is your your wing backpack, I believe. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. It should be in your items. Thank you. I'm also going to use my reaction to make an attack against that guy for hitting Valentina. Sure thing. Still gonna have disadvantage though. Did I say 16 and 18? Yes. Okay, I forgot to add the flanking bonus. So that would be an 18 and a 20. So that'd be okay. Both of those hit. Oof. Cool. Um, I would react to the first one then. Okay. But um, let's if, see. I if we're can... if we're changing that, can I also? change what I do in that case? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Instead, I'm going to use my interception to reduce the damage against Valentina. Okay. okay. Nice. I don't see it in my items, right? Huh. Um, I know that it was a thing we discussed. Right. Let me... What was it called? It was called, like, a, a Dustwing backpack or something like that. Let me check. Oh, wait. I see it. Right here. Found it. Wing dust backpack. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, yeah. So, do you want me to read what it does? Sure. Sure. Uh, so let's see. As a reaction, whenever I take damage from an enemy attack, or whenever an enemy ends its movement within five feet of me, I can magically turn invisible and move up to my movement speed away from that enemy, leaving a sudden cloud of golden dust cloud behind in the space that you occupied. This invisibility lasts until the start of your next turn. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, um, as Visual takes his reaction to absorb the damage of the shock, uh, most of it, um, you turn invisible and can move up to your, move up to your movement speed away. Where would you like to go? Oh, I want to move, uh... I didn't plan that part. Uh, <laughs> um, can I? I can't move my character. Hello? Can I, can I move you, please? Can I grab you? Ma'am? There you are. Got her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I move. How far is 30 feet? Uh, I'm gonna move over here. Okay. You disappear. You are currently invisible. As you dash out of the crowd. Is there smoke blocking their vision? Like, how long does the cloud of smoke last? Um, it only leaves behind cl a dust cloud in the space you occupied. So in okay. that small five-foot square that you were standing in, it leaves dust in that square. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you are currently invisible on your reaction. We are going to move back and take the rest of these attacks. Um, oh, how much damage did I take? Vigil reduced it by seven. Uh, ten. By ten. So you take okay. no damage. Oh. Wow. The, okay. the attack still hit, but you took no damage from it. Cool. Yeah, so the club comes down, begins to strike the top of you, but Vigil interposes his shield and stops the flow from beneath, uh, forcing it uh, to not hit you, but you still activate for a momentary uh, second you... Vigil, watch two moth wings sprout from Valentina's back, flutter for a moment, and then suddenly there's a cloud of golden dust that poofs, and Valentina disappears from their space. Whoop! <laughs> it's explode. No! 
<laughs> All right. Uh, the rest of these guys are going to uh, try and move through to like feel around. It's feeling around for you, trying to get a grip on you. Can't find anything, so that'll be his turn. Um, but the rest are going to take their attacks. So that's going to be... Yeah, the only card that they have is Vigil. So that's going to be six attacks on Vigil. Oh, no! Oh, my God, no! Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Rolo, Rolo, Rolo. First two attacks. Rolo. That's a 12 and a 3. Miss and okay, miss. Okay, Uh, 4 and a 15. <laughs> okay, miss. okay, okay. Four I'm so sorry, Jacob. Ten. I thought I was going to create spokes so you could get away. <laughs> what? Isn't it all? You said six, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh. all those attacks you miss against you. Oh, thank you. Like, Incredible. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, they are coming down on you, and you are just crane shield up, swipe out with the sword, deflect another attack. One comes down on you with his jaws. You uppercut it with your free fist and drive your knee into another one as it's trying to strike you with its with its uh, heavy maul. And you are just a fighting force, a flurry of blows. Fending yeah. off all these attacks. Let's go, Owl Knight. Uh, with that, we are moving on to four attacks against Braza. Okay. As oh, these no. other two lizard folk are squaring up on her. How about the Scaly Cur? <laughs> it's an eight and a three. I'm gonna switch dice. Miss, miss. You'll never take me, you nudists! I told you oh. already, I would not join you! <laughs> you call them nudists? <laughs> hey, look at them, they're wearing nothing! <laughs> the dragonborn, like, confused. None of those attacks <laughs> hit, and then it's gonna be uh, another four attacks on you, Selene. The fuck? Four? Oh my god. No! Man, they're rolling like Garbo. That's like my fifth Thank natural God. one in this single round. <laughs> yeah, burn him, burn him, burn him. Uh, the other one is a 20 to hit. Oh, uh, that does hit. And the other two attacks are going to be an 8 and a 17. Uh, 17 does hit. Okay. So as they come at you from both sides, the first one strikes with a club and it catches you in the neck and you falter for just a moment as the other one manages to take a bite out of your wing. As you're calling and screaming, you take nine damage halved. So, so you only take four damage. Four. But okay. you get harried quite a bit. Moving on, the two shamans light up the crystals in their hands, and Vigil and Delia each take. 11, 11 fire damage. Oh, owie! Owie, 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 owie. <laughs> Let's see. What's this guy right here? Oh, that's I even, Aiden. <laughs> I don't even think I can fail. I just realized I don't even think I can fail con saves. What do you mean? <laughs> Because I have, paladin. unless I take like a big shitload of damage, because I have plus six and then also plus three. Yeah, it's going to be hard for you to fail con saves. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. You, does that <laughs> plus three apply to you or just people around you? Me and everyone. Okay. Okay. Not everyone. But yeah. Does that so, count towards everyone concentration to checks? Right? Yes, because yes, concentration checks are con saves. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Let's see, that is going to be the first of the shamans um, is going to yeah let's get fucky with this 
It's going to swirl its hands in the air as you watch oh, no. sparks of mist and cloud form. And this entire area becomes obscured with a heavy fog. Ooh. Oh man, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> ah! This. Ah! <laughs> I'm free from heat metal! Ha <laughs> <laughs> What? No, you're Yay. not. <laughs> Fog is concentration, baby! Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Womp womp. Womp womp. Well, I had two heat metals going. <laughs> on me? <laughs> no, the other one was going on Delia. Okay. <laughs> so one. <laughs> like, that would be fucked up. Two heat metals. Uh, uh, uh. Two heat metals. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that he's not a vampire. What, what? are you talking about? Yeah. No. Me, no. 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 Listen. 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 I watched. Um. Actually, it, he is vampire-like. He's not a vampire. <laughs> Oh, shit, Jason! Canonically! Is he like a, a vampire then? Yeah, no, he's it? no, he's just a man who likes to count, and he wants to be a vampire. The... So what, is he what? just like... And the gothic castle. Is he wearing yes. like pup, the puppet equivalent of plastic fangs? Yeah, I guess so. They never say he's a vampire. They say he's vampire-like, and they make it a, like a really big distinction, so I don't think he is. Oh, what the heck? My childhood was a lie. It blew my mind. <laughs> Stolen valor. What the fuck? The next thing gonna tell me Grover isn't a monster. Yeah. Okay, well, I have news. I'm oh, just kidding. No! <laughs> 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 Super <laughs> Cookie no. Monster's not actually his name. No. It's not even like cookies. <laughs> it's Jeb. Oh my god, <laughs> Jeb. Name's it's Jeb. Randall. <laughs> I have to look this up now. I know it's something. Okay. okay. Um. So... so. The one focusing on the heat metal on Delia changes their focus to create a fog cloud within the interior, uh, obscuring everybody's vision. The other one... You gotta make sure that there's not concentration on these, because you got me once. <laughs> yeah. And out again. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have said anything. Shouldn't have said anything. No, it was good, it was good. I mean, it's the only way to get your heat metal off. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just say that the other one just continues to singe your skin with the heat metal and will not take any other actions. As we move on, Celine, it is your turn. You are suddenly enshrouded in heavy, condensed fog, making all vision nigh impossible. So I'll have disadvantage on my attack? Everything is heavily obscured, which I believe... It would cause disadvantage. Heavily obscured, 5e. Like this guy's literally uh, in front of me. You are suffering from the blinded condition. Fuck. We got the blindness. <laughs> uh, you fail any ability check that re requires sight and attack rolls against uh, you have advantage and creatures and you're, you're, you uh, strike with disadvantage. Oh. So doesn't that mean that all of our attacks are flat? Yeah. Why? Because advantage and disadvantage cancel out. No, no, because no. it would it's apply. A... It would apply for the lizards as well. Yeah, that yeah. Are in the cloud. It wouldn't be flat because that's their instance of attacking and your own instances of attacking. You have disadvantage to attack others, but the same would apply for the lizards. They would have disadvantage attacking you. Right. Only thing. But like attack rolls against the creatures have advantage. Why? Attack rolls against the because they're blinded. Th oh. That's the blinded condition. This is a fog. Right. The fog layer uh, right. applies to everybody. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah so. so. Hmm. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> let, me, so, yeah. okay. let me look this up. Nah. This. This is how it is. Yeah. I just want to read it. 
So it's a flat roll. Uh, yeah. I have that really anybody inside. Sense. Yeah. Then what's the point of the spell? I'm guessing <laughs> it's. I'm guessing it's the for the people in the fog. You attack fine, but attacking somebody in the outside of, of the fog? in the hot food of out the fog. It's all been off. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. Only on a Tuesday. This is um, a very so. So if it was like if I was shooting into the fog, I would have disadvantage, but you guys hmm. would roll flat. But yeah. the fog heavily obscures everything. So you wouldn't know where yeah. you're shooting, so you would have disadvantage oh. shooting at stuff into the right. fog. But they're blinded, so you have advantage shooting at them, so it's just a flat roll either way. Yes. Really? What the fuck does no. this spell do? <laughs> yeah, right? You know in cartoons when you see what a giant dumb, cloud in a melee? Dumb fucking spell. <laughs> this is. <laughs> so am I rolling flat? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's a question. <laughs> Um, you can't see your right. friends or anything, but nah. you can just sense the lizard on um, either side of you. But I can smell the scent of blood near me. You can do so that. So I'm yeah. gonna fucking kill whoever's next to me. All right. <laughs> go for it. Um, let's go for the wow wow. This 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 person right here. This this one right here. Oh jeez. That this one? one? Are you sure? sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? Okay. This one right here. All right, cool. Okay, okay. Um, I'm doing good with health, so I think these are just going to be normal attacks. Okay. So, action, I'm going to hit. Why can't I? Uh, 16. 16 definitely hits. All right. So, D8 plus D4. Where did my D8 go? You just can't use any other rulers and can't right click uh, ever. <laughs> right? I feel like yeah, there was something that I've. I mean, we know it's that cluster. Yeah. Right. It basically just fits perfectly on all of us. So. Okay. I, I could put it up if you wanted to fuck around. I might ask that of you. Thank you. So it's three slashing, four cold for my action. For my bonus action, I'm going to hit again. Okay. Three slashing, four cold. Uh, 17, that hits. That hits, definitely. This has no cold damage, it's just a d8. Uh, eight! Um... Oh! Am I supposed to be adding something to this? Shit! Um... So for the- what was the last number I told you? Was it for the slashing? Was three? Yeah. yeah. So three plus two. Okay. So that'd be five. Um, so and I roll... Yeah, and then I rolled a four plus two. So that's six. You don't add a plus two to your blood right damage. No, this is just my hands. For your but, second attack? Yeah, it's just a normal attack. Do you not add I can, blood right damage to both your attacks? It's only for one one weapon, it says. So I'm assuming one hand. You can attack I can read with the it. same hand twice. Okay, if, if you allow me to. Absolutely, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so that was four for my regular hand, so plus two, that's six. And then I'll add the d4 for cold, and that's a three, so three cold. Okay. Um, that lizard folk does go down. Okay. Uh, let's see, that goes, that guy goes down. Um, I'm gonna move. And I don't, and you know, if they hit me, they hit me. Go here. Okay. Um, it does sense you're trying to move away. It is going to go for the attack there. That's a five. Nope. So many goddamn that ones. Um, right. so that's my turn. All right, moving on. Vigil, what do you do? 
as this okay. fog layer <laughs> and shrouds you all. You suddenly can't see anything. Bumbly, 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 boo. Okay. A party up in here. <laughs> This is a bit of a predicament, isn't it? This definitely is a getaway kind of spell. Though I guess it prevents anybody from getting advantage. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'm probably forgetting away. Mm -hmm. I think it has something to do with like hiding if you're heavily obscured. Mm. It could be used for that benefit for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. DM... Do you think I could, I could use an action to charge through the two to like that I oh oh no oh, I meant to hold alt that I'm facing right now. You want to barrel past them? Yeah. Uh yeah, it'll just take extra movement to move through them. Okay, how much extra movement? Uh, it's double the movement to move okay. through them. So. If they occupy, let's see. They occupy roughly five feet, so you would move ten feet to get through them, and then you would have twenty feet beyond that. Okay. So you have a total of like twenty-five feet of movement. Twenty-five. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to say to everybody, we have to rally outside of the fog. Rally oh. this way as I charge through. Okay. They are going to take their op attacks on you. Oh, I'm going to use my action to disengage. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. no. Um, and for a bonus action, um, I'm going to throw one of the other uh, two icicles floating in my hand toward this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All so right, he needs right. to make a deck save. 14. He rolled a nat 15. <laughs> He's a fucking bitch is who he is. <laughs> um, so he takes half as much. He takes, I, I think that's literally one. He takes three cold damage, half of that. Okay. okay. But he does need to make a concentration check, none, none okay. the less. Does the bare minimum <laughs> have to be 10 on the con save? It yeah. does, it oh, does. Yeah. It's 10 or half of the damage taken, whichever is higher. Okay, okay. let's see. Uh, that's uh, an add 18. He's a fucking bitch. He is a he's fucking a bitch. bitch, and he's heating your armor up. PP boy. Like you're a coal fire on Christmas. Anything else you want to do? <laughs> Light him uh, on fire. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> With that, I love using this this music for sharks. Oh, oh God. God. As it is the mount's turns as they all charge in <laughs> and go into a fucking feeding <laughs> frenzy. <laughs> Good job. Oh, perfect idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh excited that I get to come out of my invisibility in the middle oh, of yeah, the fucking it's, sharks. Yeah, they would only be after <laughs> vigil. Vigil, <laughs> no. And these ones Bitch are gonna no. scoot around the sides. Vigil, no. <laughs> I just love the Bitchel. idea of Bitchel, like, come out of the fog, everyone, and the shark just... <laughs> <laughs> there they are. <laughs> it's like that scene where Gandalf is like, don't hold, don't retreat, and continue on, and then the fucking, like, cave trolls come out of retreat. nowhere, he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, funny... Is I about to have a Gandalf and Sam moment? <laughs> Uh, well, unlike cave trolls, these things have pack tactics. It then. So, one, two, three, four, They have five. what? Pack, pack tactics. tactics. Pack tactics. They get advantage. If they're within five feet of each other. Um, oh, Which they all are. God. So, let's see. That's going to be... 
I'm losing track of sharks here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, are they allowed eight. to be all on top of each other like that? They are large. I mean, they have to occupy their own space. Mm -hmm. They can't, like, be on top of each other like that. They also can't occupy our spaces. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry, DF. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> you have a right to be. Um, but still, that's... Uh, Oh. So I guess this one would bump into you trying to race towards Vigil. Punch him for the gills. Just kidding. Yeah. That's still going to be one, two, three, four, five, six attacks against you, Vigil. Um, these other two yeah. can't seem to get closer because something's in their way. Um, Stupid sharks. I'll make them... <laughs> Thrash violently towards Vigil, and I'll count that as a attack roll with disadvantage at you, Valentina, because they're trying to get past you. At yeah, Vigil. that makes. I mean, if they're touching me, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'll give those guys disadvantage on their attacks. Advantage. That's going to be an 18 to hit on the first one. Oh, wait. No. Nope. Disadvantage. Um, 13 to hit. Misses either way. Yeah. Oh, these are for Valentina. Oh. oh. That does miss still. Okay. The second one, I rolled a nat 17 and a nat 18, so that's going to be a 23 to hit. Uh, oh, 23? Uh, that one does hit. Okay. From that one, you take... Uh, six points of piercing damage as its jaws do manage to bite around your midsection. How much damage? Six piercing six? damage. Okay. Would my invisibility go down at that point? Um, let's see. Uh, this invisibility lasts until the start of your next turn is what the item says. So I'll say no. Okay. Okay. And in most cases, with lesser invisibility, it's it ends once you take an attack action. Um, yeah. Or cast a spell or something like that, or you're forced to make a save. So I'll say your invisibility is still up, but you still take the damage. Okay. The next is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six attacks on Vigil. Each with back attack. Yeah. Uh, ten. <laughs> That's a dirty 20 to hit. That hits. So that's one attack. A 23 to hit. That hits. A 19 to hit. That misses. A 15 to hit. Miss. And another dirty 20 to hit. That hits. So that's three hits. So as the... As the sand scales all start swarming around you, uh, gnashing and biting frantically at you, three purchases of teeth manage to sink into your armor as you take... Twenty-five points of piercing damage. Okay, how many is Ooh. like? So, okay, I'll just roll then. Should I just roll concentration three times then? Yeah. Okay, I failed on the. Oh, wait, I think it's no. either ten or half the damage. Yeah. Rounded up. So like that's twenty-five total, right? So 25. none of them were more than ten. Uh, none of them were more than. Uh, w yeah, none of them were more than ten. Okay, actually, in that case, then I succeed all of them. All right. Default. Okay. Um. Okay. Ow. Wait, sorry. How much was that? Twenty-five. Yep, twenty-five okay, damage. Let me check that off. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
Meanwhile, over here, Delia is quickly surrounded by the other sharks. Um, this is insane. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all chose to attack. <laughs> and Delia is going to receive four instances of attacks. Which are going to be a 15 to hit. A 18 to hit. A 22 to hit. And an 11 to hit. Uh, the 11 misses, everything else hits. Okay. Delia is also torn asunder by teeth as she takes... Ooh, it was her high. Um... Thirty-one points of piercing damage. Oh fuck! Delia gets ripped apart again. You oh, all no. hear the crunch Not of again. metal and the <laughs> scream of metallic engines dying as you hear Delia's droning voice uh, cry out as it is shredded. Caden, you're up. You don't see anything. Uh, I don't, but I did hear Vigil say rally, so I'll start to run in that direction that I heard his voice. All right. And I'm assuming I'll probably run into one of the Thousands of Blizzard sharks. Folk. You're going to run towards Vigil's voice? Yeah, right. Yeah, and I run into that guy there. Okay, you run into that guy. You can scoop past him, make it out. Well, so, as soon as I run into him, I would attack him, so I would stop. Okay. Like in front of him. You stop right in front of him, you bump into him, you can go ahead and make an attack. A straight roll. Straight roll. Uh, that's good. That is a 25. Alright. Uh, that hits. And that's also good. That's 16 points of slashing. 16 points of slashing. Alright. Uh, he definitely takes that, and boy howdy, does it hurt. Still up. Still up, yeah. Okay, second slash attack, pretty good. Um, that's a 22. 22 hits. Uh, not as good. That is 8 slashing. 8 slashing, um... You don't strike as true with this shot, just barely grazing him, but the part that you grazed was the neck as you deal just enough damage for this one to slump to the ground. And he goes down. Okay. Um, once that one is fallen, I'll uh, keep going to the voice. Sh sharks. Oh boy! <laughs> Alright, and that's your movement. You see Vigil currently swarmed by all of these monstrosities. The, the Holy Sword aglow and lit like a flashlight in a pond of crocodiles. <laughs> a thousand fangs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't really have much to do with my bonus, so uh, that is my turn. All right, Valentina, Shoo. you are visible. Nice. All right. Um, how is Vigil looking? Uh, uh, he's bloodied. Bloodied. Okay. Um, we're within five feet of each other, right? Yeah. I can touch him. Okay. If um, can I huh? like talk to Valentina on her turn? If Valentina is it just the doctor you? The conversation. I, I okay. mean, sure, I can be like, do you need healing? Save yourself! Go! Oh, my god! <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Get that motherfucker! Live to fight another day! Oh my god. Uh, Jacob, are uh, you trying to die a hero? 
Uh, die! <laughs> if, if I die a hero, then it is incidental. <laughs> Maybe I am a hero. You're my hero, Vigil. You are the true swordsman. <laughs> um, I don't think Valentina would do that. She would say, sorry, I can't leave you behind. And I cast Mirror Image on myself. Oh, alright. Suddenly, <laughs> there are three duplicates of Valentina dancing around her, uh, occupying her space. You're not sure which is the real one. Uh, and then, can I use my bonus action to just shoot one of these motherfuckers in the face? Yeah! <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, I get I get to. Uh, it's a bonus action thing that I get as a crossbow expert. Does it say you have to take the attack action first? Uh, let me double check that, actually. Um... Oh, yeah, I have to use a one-handed weapon first. Never mind, then. I'll gotcha. hold off. Can I use, um... Can I cast... I already cast a spell, so we're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do. Okay. Uh, moving on to Braza. You are shrouded in this fog. You feel people moving all around you, and... Uh, the There's a crystal on your neck that you hold close to you and you watch it go dim as you realize Delia has fallen. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to move around Celine. To right about here. Okay, that guy is gonna take an off attack on you. Okay. All right. He whiffs totally. You don't even notice okay. his club sail above your head. And then Raza's eyes are going to start glowing a familiar blue that I guess only Celine would be able to see. And she opens her mouth and unleashes a beam of energy. Oh. As she exhales her draconic breath weapon in. Actually, she would be like right about here. In a 30 foot line. Oh, 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 nice! Oh, oh, this fucking line, dude! Alright, okay. so they need to. <laughs> yeah, thanks for saying that, Bryce. Uh. It is heavily obscured. You would not see them in this line. I would have seen them before the fog went up. They would be in a different place, wouldn't they? No, they, it's they haven't moved. Oh. Since. Um, Could be a shot in the dark. Lucky shot. Sure. They need I'll to make a dexterity 13 roll. Saving throw. Okay. For these... I guess you could say four. And, and, and the, the shark. shark. One, two, three, four, five. Counting the shark, yeah. So they need to beat uh, 13? Yes. I swear to Christ, that's two nat ones. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, two natural 14s. And an 11. Um, but... Let's see. He's in heaven and he's a zero, so. Yeah, that's uh, three failures. Okay, uh, everyone who succeeds takes half damage. Mm. Okay. They all take uh, 11 lightning damage, or half as much of it on his success. Okay. okay. That one succeeds. That one succeeds, and then the others fail. Okay. 
Okay. okay. Anything else you want to do? Then I am going to bonus action cast Branding Smite okay. for later at second level. All right. You light up your Warhammer with a fiery surge. Actually, oh, no, I don't think I can. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I'm casting Branding Smite. I was thinking about casting something else, but that's an action. Okay. Uh, watching as uh, everybody is starting to escape the fog cloud, uh, the fog cloud will be dispelled. <coughs> if I could ask you to dispel that, Blaine. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's all good? Ooh. Um... This shaman is going to rush forward. It's going to scan the crowd. It sees two possible sources of metal armor. What kind of armor are you wearing, Brassa? I think it's scale mail. Okay. Brassa, uh, odd. Hayden, even. That's an odd. Braza, your scale mail lights up with a fiery red intensity as you become subject to heat metal. Okay. You take five fire damage. Alright. Um, it's an action to cast, okay. Um, yeah, it does that. And then the other one is going to continue uh, propping its heat metal on Vigil. Vigil, you take an additional five fire damage. And these lizard folk are going to start swarming feet. We're going to start swarming folks. And that's going to be <sighs> Yeah, I'm gonna say three attacks on Braza, three attacks on Celine. Each of them get a plus two, so Celine. Uh <laughs> damn it. Four, Four nine, nine fifteen. <laughs> nope. Braza. Ten twenty eighteen. Uh, the twenty. Um. Now you know what. Braz is gonna cast shield. All right. As a reaction, everything misses. Everything does indeed miss. Um. Celine, it's your turn. I'm going to. Should we take out that sorcerer? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go straight for this guy and I will take attacks. Alright. There will be four opportunity attacks on you. Go for it. I swear to Christ, my my dice might hurt tonight. Oh no. Well, it's good news for you guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. None of those was above an eight. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to attack with Visceral in mind. All right. Woo. Let's see. Is it right here? Just thought. All right. Negative five penalty. Uh, I rolled pretty well. Um, 18. Action. Plus 2, so 19, 20. 20 minus 
five. For a 15 to hit? Yeah. 15 just hits. Oh my god. Okay. Um, so this will be with the D4 and a D8. Mm-hmm. And then you add plus 10 after your dex mod. Okay. Nineteen slashing one cold. Nineteen slashing one cold? Yep. All right. Um, You race up to this one and you take your hand and you just stick it right through its gut, grab something hard and pull, and this thing (laughs) folds backwards. Oh! Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Like a Mortal Kombat move. Yeah. God. Heat metal is gone from you, Braza. Fuck. In an instant. (laughs) Um, let's see, can I do anything else? You heal 10 hit points. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I'm back up to four. All right. Uh, Sorrel attack. So, I have a bonus action still? Yes, you do. Um, let's do... It's not one Is action surge a bonus action? Action surge is a free action. Yeah. I'm going to. Well, it's a free action, right? Yep. Doesn't so can I much. use my bonus action and then do action surge? Yes, you can. Okay. I'm going to, as a bonus action, use my Blood Curse of Binding Ooh. on, uh, say, uh, let's say, uh, I'll be turning around. So let's say the guy right next to me on my left. This one? Or this guy? Let's go for that guy. Okay. Uh, the, and I'm gonna amplify it, so it's gonna be. I'm gonna take a D four, or is it a D six? I believe it's still a D four. So a D four. So I'm gonna take uh, three damage. Okay. What kind of save does he need to make? It needs to make a saving throw of strength twelve. All right, they save. Um, action surge. Go for it. Let's attack that same guy. Go for it. Let's go for. Let's do from. Let's do normal this time. Okay. Ooh, that wasn't a very good roll. Seven plus two. Um... Oh, wait! I'm confused, because on my attack action, it says fighting style unarmed fighting plus two, but on my bonus action, it says predatory strike plus five. So am I adding plus two or plus fives? I think maybe the plus two is part of the plus five. Is it like see there? Two, plus three, plus and then this says plus two. You will be adding uh, if you're attacking with dex. 
So I haven't haven't been adding that the whole time. <laughs> Read your character sheet. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> All right. Decks to attacks. Attack action. Okay, so seven plus six. Thirteen. Thirteen. I didn't roll very well. Does that hit? Let me check. Uh, 13 does not hit. Okay. Uh, bonus. Do I get a bonus to hit if I action surge? Um, or no? Or is it just no, an extra right. action? It's just an extra action. Okay. Then that's my turn. All right. Vigil, you're up. Okay. I'm going to use my action to disengage. And then I'm going to charge this way, bonus action, dash, to get behind this fucking guy. All right. This fucking guy. <laughs> Teleport's behind you. <laughs> All right, you disengage and you dash. You are behind the shaman as he watches you just streak past him. Um, <laughs> is that your turn? Yeah, that's all I can do. All right, we come to the sharks, which are now all surrounding Valentina. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's okay, they have a super disadvantage at hitting me. Did you do they? Because yeah. I, there's three of me, or actually there's four of me. Oh, uh, true, 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 true. Cast mirror image, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see. We're going to go for one, two, three, four, uh, five attacks against you from these sharks as these guys all move into position uh, elsewhere. Okay. So I have to roll a d20 and get above an eight to see if they hit me or if they hit... Um, one of the other guys. Okay. At least I, I, I think I'm reading the spell correctly. I, yeah, basically, yeah. if I hit yeah. one of the attack roll, you roll essentially to see if uh, I hit uh, one of your clones or not. Okay, so you have to see what hits first. Got it. Yeah. These all have pack tactics, so they all get a plus two to their attack rolls. Top of their bonuses. Okay. Quick, throw the corpses at their mouths. That's going to be a 18 and a 24, another 18, a 9, and a 14. So three of those hit. Okay. So let me roll my d20 three times, and I got a 15, a five and a three. So two of them hit me, and one of them hits one of my, uh, clones. Okay, I think it's I think it's the other way around. Oh, is it? Yeah, so uh, you must roll a six or higher to change the attack to a duplicate. So, high is good. Oh, well, yeah. I got, so I got um, I got a five and a three, though. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. One was a one was Sorry. a thirteen. One was, no, you're fine. I, I totally was like, misheard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> okay. Flat D twenties, right? I just, it doesn't say for me to add any modifier to it. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, flat D twenties. Okay. Okay. So then two of them hit me. Okay, two of them hit you. Uh, you end up. Taking um, 14 piercing damage as okay. their claws and their teeth graze you on that one. Okay, and then it it says that 
Um, that if one of my duplicates is hit, uh, it's destroyed. So, yeah, yeah. so, it so vanishes. one of them's gone. Okay. okay. Yeah, poofs like a Naruto image. <laughs> All right. Now this is gonna be four attacks against Kaden. Let's go. <laughs> That's uh, a ten and a natural twenty. Whew. 20 hits. That's a dirty 20 and another natural 20. Oh my god. Okay. Yep, three get through. Three get through. Okay, so I'm gonna double <laughs> the for two of these, and then... That's 31 piercing damage. Oh, fuck. As they come in, one bites your leg, another manages to consume your entire arm in its mouth, and the last oh. one bites down on your head. And it's encompassing your shoulders in that bite. You guys just watch Caden uh, get partially devoured. No! By these oh monsters. Oh my god. Oh no. Uh, Which arm did it bite off? <laughs> it didn't bite off an arm, but it oh, has okay. an entire one of his arms. It has the arm. In his mouth. It has okay. his off arm in its mouth. Oh, oh god. And oh, now, hello, sharks. <laughs> now there are five more shark attacks coming at you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I switched to my goodness. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's two twenty fours to hit. <laughs> a hit. That's a twenty-one and a natural twenty. <laughs> oh fuck. We're good, we're fine, we're fine, we're good. Okay, and a twenty-two to hit. All of those hit. All five hit, okay. Oh. What type of damage is this? This is piercing damage. Okay, so they're they're at half. Yes. But it is Five attacks coming at you. Um, Just let me know the number. Yep. Uh, That's 50 piercing damage. Oh. Half, Holy half shit. to 25. 25. I'm good. <laughs> Still so much. <laughs> as they also start just like trying to consume you as you stand. All five of them are biting onto you. Uh, it is a feeding frenzy out here. And then this one's just kind of hanging out, got no one to attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's chasing its tail. <laughs> All right. Kaden. Be cute if it wasn't deadly. <laughs> Uh, need some big boy spells or something. Okay, I'm gonna try something. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, Caden is going to let the energy of hell's flow into his spirit, into his very being, and he's gonna use the ability invoke authority. And his voice goes three octaves lower and becomes super raspy. And he says, um, "We have already slain half of your folk. You might as well leave while you still can." And I'll cast uh, Invoking Authority, allowing everybody to get uh, uh, use their reactions to make a weapon attack. But I would also like, if you may, Rai, to roll a Persuasion check on that. Okay. Nice. You can say Come on. I'm telling them to pack up and cut their losses. Oh, uh, okay. Um... You want me to roll it? Uh, I was gonna roll against roll whatever um, he's. You told him to pack up and cut their losses. Are you demanding this of them or suggesting it to them? Like, are you trying to persuade them or intimidate them? I guess it would be more of an intimidation. All right, go ahead and make me an intimidation check. With the whole like three octaves lower. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't thinking. Yeah. I wasn't in this. 
No, that's oh, a nice touch. Unlucky. Ten. Ten. Uh, can right. I add plus four to that? Given your proximity, yeah. yeah. I'll allow that. But with a fourteen. With a feeding frenzy that's going on and how thick into the fight you are, your voice doesn't manage to carry out in an authoritative manner to the degree that you are hoping for, but everybody does get their attack still. Okay. okay. Just does a little 15 bit higher hit this. Sorry. A little bit of a higher roll might have changed some minds. Um, but also, these beasts are in the thick of feeding right now, so the, yeah, the beasts yeah, themselves more. are hard to ward off. But the lizard folk, they're definitely starting to count their options, as you have taken down half their forces. Yeah, th that's who I was talking to. It's the lizard folk. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll make, I'll, a, make a, I'll make a fun roll for the lizard folk against that. Okay. 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 Uh, everybody go ahead and make an attack. Yeah! Using your reaction. Does 15 hit the dude? A 15 does hit. I got a 13 for mine. I'm not sure if that hits. Uh, a 13 does hit. Are you going for a shark? Can I get one of these, or it has to be a shark? Um, you would have to get somebody within five feet of you. Okay, I'll I'll hit a shark then. Yeah, he's just outside your range. Yeah, I'll hit a shark. Okay. Um, 16. Does that, that hit? Yep, that hits. Okay. I dealt 14 damage to him. Okay. Is he, is he alive? Let me see. Okay. 14 damage. He is still standing, but he will okay. make a save. He succeeds. God damn it. What did you get for damage, Valentina? I mean, uh, Celine. Uh, ten slashing. Two cold. Ten slashing, two cold. All right. <laughs> Whittling them down. Uh, Valentina, and Braza and Kata. Uh, I think oh. I used my reaction casting shield. You did. Um... Because I'm a war caster, I can use a reaction to cast a spell. Um, can I use Toll the Dead? Yeah, I'll yeah. allow that. Okay. Um, have any of the ones... I don't think any of the ones around me have been attacked, right? Uh, they have not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, then I'm just going to pick the one that's... Uh, this guy. Okay. Okay. Ah, let go. Let go of it. Okay. <laughs> that is going to be 13 damage. Oh, they have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. okay. And uh, beat a 15. They got a nat 17. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay. Well then, I they take half damage. Is that how that works? Does it say they take half damage in the cantrip wording? I need to check. Hang on. I may be thinking of something else. Uh, if the target misses... Uh, oh, no. Wait. No, it doesn't say anything. Never mind. Then it misses. Alright. It misses entirely. Mm -hmm. And, Caden, what about you? Do you get an attack out of this? Uh, yeah, I rolled a 13 for against the lizard folk. Uh, yeah. Um, 13 does not hit. 
Uh, okay, uh, I will bonus action um, drink a greater healing. Okay. That's. Can you remind me what that is? Is that 3d4? or uh, Greater healing is 4d4 plus 8, I believe. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, and that's my turn. Alright. Valentina, Valentina, you're up. Okay. Well, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I am going to uh, disengage. Okay. You can uh, bonus action. an action or a bonus action. I can bonus action it? Yeah, you're yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. No, then yeah, I bonus action the shit out of that. Okay. Get the hell out of there. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm running. <laughs> uh. Up to this, I'm, I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna shoot the guy that Vigil's fighting. All right, All right. go for an attack roll. Nineteen. Nineteen hits. Okay. Go ahead and roll, and roll sneak attack damage too. Fuck oh, oh, yeah. Fuckers con. That's oh, ten shit. damage. Dashing out. Or kill him. <laughs> or kill him even better. Dashing Finally. Out of there. He totally doesn't suspect you dashing, dashing out of the sand scale sharks as you dash up, load your crossbow right in the back of the head. He crumples in front of Vigil. And Vigil, the heat metal is gone. Thank God. And with that, there is a momentary reprieve where all the sand sharks and all the lizard folk, um, they take a moment, uh, realizing their shamans, their leaders, have all been slain, and they all quickly disengage uh, and get to their mounts and begin taking off in all directions, abandoning the fight. Thank God. Holy fuck. <laughs> um, if they're each getting on a shark, uh, we killed a bunch. <laughs> and since there's sharks left, Braz is going to try and jump on one that doesn't look like it has um, a rider. Yeah, there are eight, there are eight sand scale sharks left. Oh. Um, you're just jumping on it? Are you trying to, like, wrangle it? Uh, yeah, I assume, like, that's what all the, <laughs> the lizard folk are doing. They're not, like... No, they're not barebacking these things. I know, but I I feel like they're not, like, paying, like, any, I guess, atten try... too much attention to the sharks as they're mounting, so Braz going to do the same as just kind of, like... Should we try to capture one? I think we should capture several. Everybody yeah. grab a shark! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, many of them are kind of lingering about doing a very, uh, a very Jurassic Park, the three raptors scene, um, against you guys. They're kind of watching you all warily. Um, if anybody would like to try to tame one, I would need animal handling checks. I, I was talking about one of the, uh, lizard folk. What about him? Try to capture one of the lizard oh! folk. Oh, you want to try and capture a lizard folk? How? I want to pin one down. Okay. Like, okay. you're not going anywhere. <laughs> if, if you allow me to, at least. Yeah, yeah I will allow you to... The bad guy. <laughs> I will allow you to make an opportunity attack on one as it is trying to mount its sand scale. What, so what do I roll? Uh, just That's... an attack roll. Okay. So add plus six to your attack. Okay. Uh, 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that yeah. hits. I will grapple them. Okay. Just pin them to the ground. And you do so. Uh, oh, tackling okay. it off its sand scale shark, you pin it to the ground on the other side. The rest of them taking off. Braza, you you jump, jump onto on. a sand scale. Um, go ahead and make me an animal handling check. Okay. <laughs> Twelve. Roll for the sand scale to resist. 
Oh, it gets boy. a four. Yay! <laughs> what you manage to do as it thrashes back and forth, you say, Hey! And you tap it very forcefully on its nose, and it sort of stuns it for a moment. And then it comes out of its daze and seems to have calmed down a little bit. Can I make an animal handling check with strength? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll allow Just that to, like, to try and wrangle it. Yeah, like overpower it, yeah, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just roll a d20 and then add four to it. Okay. Oh, nine? That's with your plus four? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. Nine? Oh, no. <laughs> I'll add another plus four to that. I say, you have to poop it on the snoot, darling. <laughs> yeah, poop it, snoot. All right. Yeah, that one uh, also rolls poorly to resist. Um, and you're like, oh, poop the snoot. <laughs> and you slug it in the face. Uh, which sends it in a daze and makes it collapse for a moment. And it kind of looks at you with a lazy eye. Um, and you're able to mount it. I'll pet it now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. And can I pull out, like, some, like, dried meat from, like, my rations and try and, like, approach one slowly and offer it out? And then, like, you know, persuade it that way. Like, I'll, like, jump on it. Sure. After it takes the food. Go ahead and make me animal handling. Okay. 16. Please don't eat me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one that you're approaching, um, Valentina, you see as it turns its gaze towards you, its eyebrows are much. Its its eyes um, are. As eyebrows. No, eyebrows. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the folds of skin above its eyes. <laughs> it, eyelids. Its eyelids. Sure. sure. Uh, uh, it, it looks, looks angry. angry, and you yeah, notice no, several scars, scars across its top, top, and oh. smatterings of blue paint spread across its upper half. This is one of the shaman's mounts. Oh man! Uh, and okay. It looks very ferocious. Um, it met your score. I'm going to ask for one more animal handling check with disadvantage to see if you can coerce this monster. Fuck. Alright. No! Oh. Nice! 21! Woo! Got a 22 Woo! and a 21. That's awesome. <laughs> it slowly approaches you after reaching your hand out, and you're able to connect with it that you mean it no harm. And very hesitantly, like an abused puppy, it slowly warms up to you and starts eating the jerky from you. Who's less that shit? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll uh, just stroke its nose very, very. I'm not making any sudden movements still. Mm. As I keep my hand on it, I'll, I'll circle it and then slowly climb onto its back. All right. If everybody else got the bulldog, you got the Rottweiler. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Alright. What about you, Hayden? Uh, can two people ride a... ride a shark? Uh, yeah, I'll allow that for these large mouths. Ride my super cool shark with me, Caden. <laughs> <laughs> I will... I will mount the steed. Alright. Celine, as the rest of these sharks start to slowly disperse, you are pinning one of these lizard folk to the ground. And <laughs> He is writhing uh, beneath you. Um, he's attempting to claw and scratch and bite at you. What are you doing? Can I make like an intimidation check to like have them stop or? Yeah, yeah. go ahead and make me an intimidation check. And I'll count it as a pin if it succeeds. It, I have a zero, so this is like a flat roll. Yep. yep. Okay. I'll allow you to use strength instead if you want to. Oh, okay. 
Um, I'm a fan of strength for intimidation. Dirty 20. Dirty nice. 20. Against his insight for his better judgment, he got a 19. Oh! So you Ooh. just beat him as he's snapping and biting at you. He growls at you. You grapple his wrists, pin them out to both sides. Uh, I'll start. You know how like those... and you just screech back even. Louder. You know those shoehorn bills that do the like the clack thing. Yeah, I want to do that in his face. <laughs> yeah. And he shuts up, and he looks petrified. His chest is rising and falling very rapidly as he looks at you with opaque, glassy eyes. Ah! Raza is going to dismount and come over. And just squat down and kind of look this lizard folk in the eye in a draconic ask who is your leader it's kind of looking around um, it's not choosing to respond It answers or it dies. Ah! Are you still speaking in Draconic to it? Mm-hmm. That? Um, make me an intimidation check with advantage. Ooh. Since Celine's Let's go. It. Okay. Uh, that's 11. With advantage? Yeah. Okay. Didn't roll great. That's okay. Ten and a five. <laughs> DC was pretty low from its predicament. Um, it responds back to you in Draconian. We are sand scales. We have no master. We <coughs> collect for the tribe. We sell to the arena. <coughs> Great tales are there. The stronger of our kin. We were sent to collect. And you are going to sell us to the arena? Well, we had a contract with Gabbers. What did he say? Gabbers. He said that he, they had a contract with Gabbers. Gabbers. Fucker. When did you make this contract? He begins fishing around for something in his mouth. Uh, I want to hold his jaw open. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Uh, make me an athletics check. <laughs> What's oh, in your boy. mouth? What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? Spit it out. Spit, spit, it, out. spit it out. Eight. <laughs> um, you are unable to force his mouth open. And as he's fishing around for something in his mouth, he opens it slightly... And there is a sickening crunch sound of snapping teeth. And Man, I slowly starts to foam at the mouth as green viscous bubbles start to form in his throat and he slowly passes out, stops breathing, and perishes. If only I had taken curing poison. <laughs> they were contracted by Gabbers to collect us and sell us to the arena. <laughs> yeah, you can change back now. <laughs> um, Rai, where is, um, where's Gina? He's still on the ship. Is she? I thought she got thrown over. No, she would have gotten thrown over. 
Um. I will say, because I forgot her about her, like so many D and D pets across campaigns <laughs> yeah. during the race of battle, I'll say she was hiding in a rock nearby. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank God. I was like, thank God okay. for that. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my I was God. watching it all from afar. <laughs> the... Thanks for helping. <laughs> That's the best case scenario for a D and D pet. The uh -huh. DM forgets. For yeah. real, I was like, oh my God, they're gonna retcon that they took her. <laughs> <laughs> now you have defeated the uh, sand scale threat, and with that, you solved your sand shark puzzle. <laughs> Um, with that sun begins to rise on the distant horizon um, you guys are mounted at least but the only thing in sight beyond the trail of the marauder skiffing off into the desert is the nearby arena of uh, Garatas. And that's where we're going to call it for tonight. Ooh. We lived. You lived. <laughs> My God. Hey. Holy fuck. Yeah. That was Did looking you... <laughs> very dicey. <laughs> Did you think oh. we would actually be able to do that? <laughs> no. Uh, definitely no. Not. I mean, right, I mean right. we might we might have been able to do it, but it would have gone until like three a.m. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Here, I'll uh, I'll wrap up the episode and do the YouTube right, thing. Sorry. Sick. No, no, it's all good. Uh, we'll talk about it in a sec. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, I've been your host, Rymac, and these have been my lovely friends. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday for the next episode of Nexus Arcana. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Good night! Bye. Bye. Bye.